You know, sometimes you begin something, you think, I'll oh, just have a quick look, and it turns out to be a rabbit hole that you're in so deep you can't get back out again. Well, this is one of those days. I thought I'd just take the cover off my MZ N505 because the front buttons, I can't really show you them at the moment, but the when you press the buttons on the player, you get some weird results. You might press fast forward and you'll get stop or menu. And I thought well, it can't be the contacts under the buttons, because if that was the case, if you press fast forward, you might get the two adjacent buttons. Uh, but I was getting weird things, the buttons that weren't even close. So it seemed to me like it couldn't be a physical button problem. Maybe the contacts need cleaning. It seemed to me more like the data that was getting to the player was didn't match up with the buttons that were being pressed. And I undid a couple of screws and had a look inside it. And um, I thought it could be the ribbon cable um, or the circuit board for the button presses. And I had a look and I think that's what it is. So I've taken it all to pieces and what I think it is, and I can't pick it up because it's obviously a bit fragile, but let me try and zoom in. So this is the circuit board that sits inside the front of the player. That's the player itself. And this is the ribbon cable that connects the two. So can you see that? I'm just, it's really hard to visualise. Now I'm just going to stop the player and take the battery out. So what I've done is I've undone the player, the front, and taken the player to pieces. I didn't do a video. I couldn't have done it anyway. It was too complicated. I didn't know what I was doing. So you clip these two bits out from here. Clip this. Let me point here. That bit there pushes us, pushes out, and then the ribbon cable comes out like this. So that's the whole button um, assembly there. So you would play and stop. It's all marked on the circuit board, which is quite handy. And uh, there's the little display, but this is the ribbon cable. Now, from my tech support stuff, I know that these ribbon cables sometimes just need reseating because those little contacts there where they contact the um, other part of the uh, sort of the ribbon cable socket if you like sometimes they just get a bit grubby so what I've done is I've taken it to pieces I've got some isopropyl alcohol and just gently wiped those gold contacts there and then put it back in here let's zoom in again goes in that way around So that slides under there. Okay, so it slides under there. Very fiddly job. Let's see if it works now. So there's the play button. See the units come on now. And then we can press fast forward. In fact, let's skip back. Now that wouldn't have worked before. This is actually the button thing that pokes through the front of the unit. And you get those options. And it's just a plastic sheet, really. And it presses down on these contacts here. Now before, if I was to press and hold something, it would, half the time it wouldn't work half the time it'll give you a weird result. So you might press rewind and you get volume down or the menu might pop up. So what I've established here is these buttons are working correctly, these contacts. And I doubt that it was the bits that was pushing down on it, on the buttons. So my only um, conclusion could be the ribbon cable just needed reseating. So I'm going to put it back together now. I'm not going to do that on camera because it's incredibly difficult and it wasn't very well organized. But I'm going to put it back together and I'll let you know if it works. OK, what I figured out, if you're doing this repair yourself, you do not need to take the front part of it off. You just need to take the back part of it off and then unclip the ribbon cable from there. Right, I've got it back together. It all appears to be working.
The only thing left is the screws to go in there. But I did manage to break off, unfortunately, the little plastic post that pivots there on the opening mechanism. But really, it still appears to be working okay. And very oddly, I've ended up with a spring spare, which I now can't find. So if anybody knows where this spring goes, I wonder if it, whether it does go on somewhere in there. But if anybody knows where it goes, please let me know. But it's all working okay now. I've just got to put in these teeny little screws. These are the four screws that take the back off. And those ones there, they all they all appear to be the same size. And then when you get the back off, to remove this back part from the rest of the unit, it's just this back cover, you have to tilt it here to get it off this way, angle it that way, because these plastic bits stick through this case. So if you're doing it yourself, do that, but you might end up breaking that part there. So anyway, I hope that's been useful. If you, if you know what the spring does, then let me know. But apparently, or yeah, apparently, this is working perfectly now. So uh, one last thing, uh, please check the description because I've got links there to where you can donate to the channel and where you can visit my eBay account to see what I'm selling because I need to shift some of these spare uh, mini disc players or mini disc mini discs themselves to help fund future purchases. I can't keep pouring money into the channel and uh, just from my family income. So I need to um, please help with some donations if you can. And if not, just check out my eBay listings and see if there's anything on there you'd like to buy. Thanks very much. Bye.